Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing on with the 2019 AP Physics C ENM free response questions. As usual, um, this is set two, so if you're looking for set one, go to the other videos. As usual, um, if I have any mistakes that I made in the video, um, I'll put the, any corrections um, in the description below, as well as there's links to PDFs where I'll have the updated um, updated uh, solutions if I did have any mistakes. So a non-conducting hollow sphere of inner radius 0.3 meters and outer radius 0.5 meters carries a positive charge density rho as shown in the figure above. The charge density rho of a sphere is given as a function of distance r from the center of the sphere and meters given by the following. This equation, this equation, this equation. Okay, so no charge here, no charge out here, only a charge density inversely proportional, proportional to r there. Calculate the total charge in the sphere. Okay, so I just need to integrate the, uh, add up the charge density. So this is a sphere. So I actually think of uh, cutting it into different shells, like spherical shells of of uniform, uniform uh, at a fixed distance away, because I'll know that like the charge density is like constant here. Okay. So uh, the amount of charge in my little shell is given by the um, volume of the shell. So what is the volume of the shell? It would be just the surface area of the shell, 4 pi r squared, times the thickness of the shell. So this is the um, sort of the volume of the shell. And then this is the charge density, positive volume charge density. So this is a density per volume. So I just multiply by rho. So this is my volume of my shell. And then this is the charge density per shell. And that gives me how much charge that I have. Okay. Now, um, in principle, uh, the only time I need to add up this charge density, where I have charge, is um, when I actually have a charge density. It's rho b over r. So this is equal to 4 pi r squared. Rho is b over r times dr. That cancels there. So my dq is equal to 4 pi r b dr. And now I want to integrate this. To get the total charge, I want to integrate dq. And I'm going to integrate 4 pi r b dr and I'm going to integrate from 0 0.03 to 0 0.05 so that would be 4 pi b there's a constant this would be 1 half r squared evaluated from r equals 0 0.03 to 0 0.05 and um, they tell us what b was oh yeah they give us a number here so it's, it's using 4 pi times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 times 1 half times uh, 0 0.05 squared minus 0 0.03 squared. Oh, sorry, I'm cutting off the screen here. Um, times 1 half times 0 0.05 squared minus 0 0.03 squared. Okay. So 4 pi times 1.6 e minus 6 times 0.5 times I got 1.61 times 10 to the minus 8. Um, and the units of this are coulombs. Coulombs per meter squared coulombs. And I believe that is, that sounds familiar. So that's what I got the solutions. Okay, so using Gauss's law, calculate the magnitude of the electric field E on the outer surface of the sphere. So I'm going to create a Gaussian surface on the outer surface of the sphere here. It's a shell. You got to think of it as three dimensional. It's like, because this is a sphere. So I think of it as a shell. And um, Gauss's uh, basically law is the integral, the surface integral, e dot dA is equal to the amount of charge enclosed over epsilon naught. Okay. The electric field is uniform because it's a sphere by symmetry. If I rotate it, like all the E fields should be the same because it's symmetrical. So it's just E, so this is just E times the area, which is 4 pi um, times R squared, R being the outer radius, 0 0.05 squared. So this is E times the area, and I found the charge already, Q over epsilon naught. So E is just equal to Q over epsilon naught um, divided by 4 pi times 0 0.05 squared. So I just plug in Q for here, and I plug in epsilon naught for there. Um, so 1.61 E minus 8 divided by... Um, 4 divided by pi divided by 0 0.05 squared divided by, oh, what's epsilon naught? I, I find it annoying. I have to scroll all the way up. Um, epsilon naught. 
e minus 20. And I got um, 5.79 times 10 to the 12. Is that right? So. Newtons per meter. Okay. Um, wait, 10 to the 12. No. Um, that's not 10 to the 12. I think I. Um, I forgot to do the one e minus eight. I forgot to do the e minus eight. So I got um, a five point seven nine times ten to the fourth. Sorry, sorry about that. I plugged as a calculator mistake on that. I was like, um, yeah. Um, on the axis below, sketch the magnitude of the electric field as a function of distance r from the center. So if I look at different Gaussian shells inside the the, the, the this part, I'm not enclosing any charge, so the e field is zero out here. And then the E field is going to increase. So you kind of have to think about like how the E field is going to increase, like what's the shape of it. So if I take an arbitrary like uh, Gaussian, uh, Gaussian surface um, in the middle of here, I would have the same thing. E times 4 pi um, R squared is equal to the enclosed charge. The enclosed charge would be um, kind of like I did this integral, but instead of 0 0.03 to 0 0.05, I would have um, um, 4 pi times b um, times 1 half r squared. So it would be the where r squared minus 0 0.03 squared. And all of that divided by, um, uh, oh, no, that was it. Uh, that's the enclosed chart divided by epsilon naught. OK, so it's kind of like an r squared. Like So if I divide by the r squared here, it's going to be like, um, it's going to increase. Wait. Um, so this is the enclosed charge. This is epsilon naught. I would divide by 4 pi r squared. So the 4 pi's cancel. So I'd have um, 1 half b r squared. If I divided by r squared, um, it would be a constant minus. Yeah, so I think it would increase, basically, increase like a 1 over r squared. So it's going to be kind of like this like a little bit of a curve here. And then after that, then the enclosed um, uh, shell only includes a fixed constant charge. And so then it will decrease 1 over r squared like this. So general shape like that. I was just going to give you a rough idea of, this, of the exact shape based on some of the equations. So calculate the electric potential on the outer surface of the sphere and assume the electric potential has to be 0 at infinity. So here we're going to use the equation that um, v is equal to negative um, e dot dr, but we're going to integrate from infinity. So I'm going to integrate from um, in, in positive infinity all the way to where I am at, 0 0.05. The electric field is q over 4 pi r squared epsilon naught. And um, that's, again, using uh, the Gaussian surface, right? Like it's 4 pi r squared, where r is like the, so if I, yeah. The, so the electric field goes down 1 over r squared um, dr. And so then I get, well, this is, um, do the antiderivative of this. Um, well, bring, oh, we'll bring out the q, q over 4 pi epsilon naught. Bring out all the constants, infinity to 0 0.05, 1 over r squared dr. So this becomes negative 1 over r. So that will cancel with this negative. So I'll get positive q over 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 over r, evaluated from, um, uh, infinity to 0 0.05. 1 over infinity is 0. That's kind of the assumption we're going to make. Um, and then, so I'm going to have q over 4 pi epsilon naught times 0 0.05. And so um, these are numbers. This q is the same. It's the same 1.61 times 10 to the minus 8. It's the total charge. And then epsilon naught is a constant. So then I just plug it into my calculator. I got the voltage to equal 2,900 volts, which is rounded two significant figures. OK. And a proton is released from rest on the outer surface of the sphere at time t equals 0 seconds. Calculate the magnitude of the initial acceleration of the proton. Calculate the speed of the proton after a long time. So I think in general, I was making sure this is a positive charge density. 
yeah, positive volume charge density, just to double check that. And so um, it's the proton's gonna go away. So the way you wanna do the, the initial acceleration, I need to know the force of the proton, force equals ma. The force is due to the um, electric field. So that's Q times the electric field is equal to mass times acceleration. So the acceleration is equal to um, Q times the electric field over M. And actually solve for these because the charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The electric field, what did we get the electric field to be? Was 5.79 times 10 to the four. And then the mass of a proton, uh, it's in a constant, it's 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. I want to double check that um, just to confirm that I get the mass of a proton and not mass of an electron. Mass of a proton, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27. All right, good. I did that right. So the acceleration would be so 1.6 e minus 19 times 5.79 e4 divided by 1.67 e minus 27. 5.55 times 10 to the 12 meters per second squared. Calculate the speed of the proton after a long time. Um, so for this, it's sort of like energy. We would say that the um, the work, like because I know the potential, like the Q delta V is the work that's going to be done by the electric field or all this charge on the system. So that's Q times the voltage we found, which is 2900. That has to go all into its energy, its kinetic energy. And so its velocity is 2Q times 2900 divided by M. And uh, like usual, I, these are constants for the proton. So, oh, and I get to take the square root of this. So square root of 2 times 1.6 e minus 19 times 2900 divided by 1.67 e minus 27. Uh, 745,000 meters per second. Just double check that's what I got. Yep. All right. Hope you found that helpful. Let me know if uh, you notice any mistakes or how you did or uh, if you have any questions. And I'll see you in the next video.